Good morning, welcome to WHBC TV. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers out there. This is a day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And what a mighty day to be alive and well in the house of the Lord and in the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, we thank God that we have a father in heaven who loves us and his love is like a hurricane. And this morning, we're just celebrating all our fathers and we're thanking God for all our fathers, those who are alive and those who are a cloud of witnesses all around us this morning. And so I greet you with Christ's joy. In a little while, I'm going to be invited you to come into the service with me as we go into a message, a, a very familiar text, a very familiar message that perhaps you've heard uh, on a Father's Day. Uh, it's the parable of the prodigal son. However, this morning, the Lord gave me a new message, a new twist to that story. Instead of focusing our attention this morning on the par prodigal son, we'll be talking about the prodigal brother. Yes, there are two prodigals in that parable. Not one, but two. Why don't you get a pen and paper? And let's go into the word of God and see what the Lord Jesus wants us to avoid, the pitfall he wants to avoid men, the pitfall he wants us to avoid as men on this Father's Day. The title of the message is The Prodigal Brother Syndrome. Come with me and I'll come back and pray with you. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning on the subject the prodigal brother syndrome. PBS. The prodigal brother syndrome. PBS. Before you take your seat, greet two people around you and ask them politely. Hope you don't have a PBS. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hope you don't have, hope you don't have the prodigal brother syndrome. Because I might want to change seat. Hope you don't have a PBS because I might want to change seat. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's Father's Day. Come on, church, let's give the Lord a shout of praise for all our fathers. Both the ones, both the ones that are alive and with us here today, and those who are now clouds of witnesses surrounding us. Happy Father's Day to you all dads here and, and the ones out there watching us through WHBC TV. And happy Father's Day to me too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Last Sunday I had a, an early Father's Day breakfast in bed. I, I said early Father's Day because somehow my wife thought last weekend was Father's Day. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. She can bear you witness and my kids can bear you witness. So she instructed the kids the night before to make sure that they wake up early in the morning to make me breakfast in bed. So Adam got up early last Sunday and went out to Tim Hortons <laughs> and bought me a BLT. I, I guess when you can't make it, you buy them. <laughs> Church, isn't it true that the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world? Or is it just an old saying? The older I get, the older I get, the more convinced I am that Father's Day seems like a day set aside as someone's attempt to pacify fathers for Mother's Day. 
Because Father's Day has never been able to get the same draw and, and the same hoopla that Mother's Day get. Can I get a witness from all the fathers in this house? Have you noticed on Mother's Day, the church is packed out? Because everyone wants to go to church with mama. But on Father's Day, take a look around you. <laughs> Did you know that on Mother's Day, you, you probably heard this before. Do you know on Mother's Day, the most phone calls are made? Because everyone wants to call home and talk to mama. But guess what happens on Father's Day? On Father's Day, it used to be the most collect calls are made. You figure that one out. On Mother's Day, everyone wants to go to the restaurant. Everyone wants to go to the restaurant and take mom out for dinner. Restaurants are packed out. This Mother's Day passed in, in May. We went to Mandarin, and we were told, I, I had to even make a reservation to get in, and we were told at Mandarin that we had only two hours to eat. <laughs> Can you imagine a Mandarin? They're giving you time? That, that we have only two hours to eat because there was such a huge lineup. But on Father's Day, <laughs> they're special everywhere. <laughs> 20% off, 50% off, buy one, get two free. Because no one is lining up, you all. Oh, seriously, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. But men, men, we're not jealous, are we? Men, men are never jealous. We just want equal rights. Amen. Amen. That, that's, all, that's all we're asking for, equal rights. Is that too much to ask for? No. <laughs> Sorry, mom, I'm not... I'm not uh, and on this Father's Day, as a man, and a father, and as a pastor of this house, the priest of this house, gentlemen, I pulled some strings for us. For good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. We're all going to go home with something. Our usual. <laughs> that, that's cookies. Not to be outdone by our, by our mothers who receive flowers on Mother's Day, we are going to go home with that cookies. Uh, this is mine. And, and gentlemen, make sure you get yours on your way out from one of our young ladies. Praise God. Did you notice this year it's... It's, it's neatly packaged. <laughs> neatly packaged. Good God. <laughs> no, no. Actually, I, we've got something more special for you. If you are a man in this house, if you are a man this morning, you are invited to a barbecue and swimming party. A barbecue and swimming party at Dickie Neal's mansion on Tuesday. <laughs> and no ladies are invited. You heard me. You heard me. You heard me. You, 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 now you want equal rights. Now you want equal rights. You heard me. It, it's, just, it's, just, it's just men only. And it's men, men's special night out so so women if you want to give your man a nice father's day gift because you forgot just send him to the morgans this tuesday all right and and that uh, we're going to all have a, and, and and by the way even if you haven't been coming to the men's bible study 
if you are a man, I'm not, I'm not, if you are a man, then you're welcome. All men are welcome in this, at this party, right? Praise God. Praise God. All the info is there in your bulletin for you. On this Father's Day, we've come to a very familiar text, otherwise known as the parable of the prodigal son. You know the younger brother who came to his father and said, Father, give me the share of my estate. And the father divided his wealth between the two sons. He goes out and spends his father's inheritance with riotous living until he got broke. And the Bible says in Luke, in Luke chapter 15, verse 17, the Bible says, but when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread? But I am dying here with hunger. Verse 18, I will arise and go to my father and I will say to my father, I have sinned against heaven. And in your sight because we all love a story with a good ending most preachers when we preach out of this text we close we end the message with the return of the prodigal son back to the father's house with the father running out to meet him put a fancy robe on him Gave him a ring in his finger, which by the way, in those days, a ring is like the MasterCard. It's a seal. When they see the ring, the merchants know who that ring belongs to, and you can get anything from that. It's a symbol of, of wealth, of status. I, I put a ring on him, and, and, and watch this and kill the fatted calf. Uh, let me give you the epistemology of fatted calf. In any Jewish home, there's a special calf they put aside and they feed that calf. They make that calf so robust, fatted. They put fat in that calf so... They, they could, they could starve some other calf, but this fatted calf in famine, in good times or bad times, must have its portion in a Jewish home. Because that fatted calf is being prepared for a special occasion. He killed the fatted calf and made Mary saying, verse 24, for this son of mine was dead and has come to life again he was lost and now he's found and we end the message on a high note after all who doesn't like a celebration who doesn't like a happy ending but oh you, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked that when the father throws you a party, you'll be aghast that when the father blesses you, not everyone who shows up at your party are happy for you. Ah. <laughs> see, 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 the problem is when you finally choose to do the right thing, like the, this prodigal son, ain't everybody are going to be glad for you. Come on now. Because some people 
have vested interest in seeing you still wallowing in your mud to make them feel good about their own mud. After all, misery. See, if I can minimize you, then I can mi maximize me. You'll be shocked that there are people who think that putting you down will somehow make them look bigger. Come on, who, 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 who am I already talking to in this place? I say when you decide to put your life back together again and do right by the Father, not everybody will be glad for you. Some people ain't going to be glad for you. They're going to be mad at you. Like the elder brother in this story. Tell me, why is it that when God just blesses you with a new townhouse of your own, and you pick up the phone to share the wonderful news with your girlfriend that you've both been living in the government housing for years together, and you pick up the phone to call her, and after a second thought, you go, nah, I'm not going to bother. Is it because you know Shikwita might ruin your party? Or is it because you know Shinene will rain on your parade? You, you, you know those party poopers around you, don't you? No, don't look around you. Don't look around you in this room. <laughs> Our text says in verse 25, now his older son was in the field and when he came and approached the house he heard music and dancing and the servants told him what was going on they were singing there's a party going on right here a celebration to last throughout the years so bring your good times and your dancing shoes. We're going to celebrate your party with you. Celebration. Come on, Uncle Tim. Remember those days? I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I feel like the cool and the gang this morning in the 70s. I, I, could just, I could just picture in the 70s Uncle Tim with his afro and boogie boogie and bell bottom. Going celebrate. Keep reading, keep reading. The Bible says in verse 28, but he became angry and was not willing to go into the party. Oh, somebody turn to the person next to you and tell him, don't be a party pooper at my party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell, tell, tell him, don't be a party pooper at my party. I think, I think that this story is so compelling and captivating that for centuries we are focused on the prodigal son. We focus on the happy ending at the expense of ignoring what is perhaps a stronger and compelling message coming from the older brother. <laughs> Lord, help me preach this message. See, see, we're so enamored by the prodigal son because we all can relate to him in that at one time or another, we were once dead like him, but now we're alive. Once lost, but now we're fined. I was blind, but now we see. But in our fascination, in our fascination, we have missed a stronger message that Jesus wants us to see here coming from the older brother. Amen. And so we can't end this message in verse 24. No. We can't end this parable on merriment. <laughs> verse 24, and they made merry. 
and they began to celebrate. We can't end it there. We can't end this story thinking there was only one prodigal son. When the truth of the matter is, there are two prodigals in this parable. The older brother may not have left home like the younger brother, but he was just as last in the house as his brother in far country. Oh, you know you can be home and still be lost in the home. <laughs> Lord, help me preach this. I say the younger brother may have rebelled to get what he wanted from his father. But the older brother used manipulation. Oh, he used manipulation to get what he wanted too from his father. So, what we have here is not simply one prodigal son in Jesus' story. What we have is two prodigals. That's why I call him the prodigal brother. Oh, don't get me wrong, church. Let's commend this older brother for a minute. For one thing, he was hardworking. Any hardworking men here today? He didn't waste his father's money unlike his brother. He didn't smoke, he didn't chew, and he didn't run around with girls that do. He was just there. <laughs> he was just there. I mean, compared to his younger brother, this older brother was a saint. Reminds me of the story of these two hypocritical brothers. They were absolute snakes. The problem is they were constantly, constantly, uh, continually at church living hypocritical lives behind the scenes. In the church they were like saints. But outside, they were deceitful in their business and, and unfaithful to their wives. A young minister came to pastor that church and, and this pastor was just preaching the word of God. Uh, nothing but the truth. Absolutely nothing but the word. And the church began to grow as people are loving the word of God. And the church began to grow and, and, and they needed space to accommodate all the growth because attendance was skyrocketing. So they went on a fundraising campaign like us, a million dollars to do the building project. In the meantime, the young pastor just stood firm, preaching the word, nothing but the word. And these two hypocritical brothers just continued to live like the devil. Suddenly, one of them died. And it was the young pastor's job to perform the funeral. So, so before the day of the funeral, the surviving brother went to visit the pastor for, to make funeral arrangements. And he said to the pastor, I will give you the one million dollars that you need for this breeding project. As a matter of fact, here's the check. And he wrote the check, signed it, and gave it to him. And he said, on one condition, all I'm asking you is, on the day of the funeral to stand before the congregation and tell the church my brother was a saint. That's all you have to do. You'll be shocked at people who bribe the pastor. <laughs> the pastor said, fine, fine, fine. He took the money, deposited the check. The day of the funeral came. Church was packed out. And people were wondering what this pastor would say because he's always stood on the word of God without flinching. And they knew the man. That's why I often say, please, when you make sure when you're living, you live well so that on the day of your funeral, you won't make the pastor lie. <laughs> I always say that at funerals. 
Don't make me lie, because I won't. They were waiting, they were waiting, and the pastor stood up in the congregation and he said, Church, the man in this casket was a snake. <laughs> Unbelieving, hypocritical, absolutely unreliable, and, and, and he hurt the testimony of this church. But compared to his brother who is here with us today, he was a saint. <laughs> <laughs> the pastor fulfilled his duty he fulfilled his uh, promise and he still got the check <laughs> come on somebody Amen. compared to his younger brother this older brother is a saint let's give him that much you know how it is you know how it is because they fornicated and they had a baby out of wedlock you look better you look better because you didn't fornicate and you didn't have baby out of wedlock mm. because of their mess up you're now the good child because you're not as bad as him you're not as bad as her Since when did God started grading sin on a bell curve? Like this sin will get you a stricter judgment than that sin. Or haven't you heard the psalmist say in Psalm 130 verse 3, If thou, Lord, should mark iniquity, O Lord, who could stand? Give me the life point. I, I'm convinced, my brothers and my sisters, that the reason the Lord brings this story, the Lord Jesus brings this story to a climax with the older brother, and it didn't end with the younger brother. I, I, I would have thought he would bring the older brother first and start with a powerful, upbeat, glorious ending. But I'm convinced the reason why he ended with the older brother is because even in this room, as he was speaking to the Pharisees, he was telling this story to, that even in this room, there are more people who are guilty of the older brother's syndrome than are guilty of the younger brother's sin. Oh, you're not hearing me. Truth be told, don't you feel hatred and anger and resentment when you see the wicked prospering and the righteous are suffering like the nine Christians who were shot in cold blooded killing in South Carolina in a church having Bible study Dickie, we were here this Wednesday having Bible study can you imagine somebody coming and shooting it could happen to any of us. And we ask why? Are the wicked prospering, Nick? And the righteous suffering? We want justice. Oh, somebody in here knows what it's like to help your man all the way through school and help him to get a good job and launch his business and get up on his two feet and now that he has a few dollars to his name in the bank he doesn't want you anymore he wants some skinny bopper <laughs> younger than you oh you're all too quiet here this morning Somebody in here knows what it's like to train somebody on the job only to find out that the person you trained has now replaced you. It's hard to walk away feeling happy and gaiety when you know an injustice has been served. Are your kids like my kids? 
Don't, don't ever think my kids are saint. Compared to your kids, they're saint. No, 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 don't ever think that. When you serve, when you, when you serve one a bigger meal than the other, the one that feels short change Christ, no fear. Isaiah said that to me. See, you know, remember, he said that to me this past last week when I, I served Daniel more food than, than I served him. He goes, Dad, no fear. <laughs> so, so, I don't mean to be too critical of this elder brother because I understand that there's some propensity to become resentful and, and cynical and bitter when you've been faithful and consistent and dependable but still you don't get your way oh pastor favors are more than he favors me oh pastor gives him more here time more recognition than he recognizes me and I've been in this church for since the Noah's flood. <laughs> That's your prodigal brother syndrome showing. Amen. Who says favor is fear? Who? If favor is fear. It won't be favor, the computer. If there went an injustice to favor, it won't be favor. It will be something you and I deserve. And since when did you and I deserve anything from a holy and righteous God? When? See, what the older brother did is like the father in this story. What he didn't realize is God the Father is not in the business of adding up the time cards and making sure no one gets overpaid. No, no, no. People who do that are called accountants. That's Dickin Kuma's job. But God ain't an accountant. But what God is in the business of doing is reconciling the whole world to himself through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not counting our trespasses against us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. And when you are in the business of reconciliation, it doesn't matter much what time the last person came in. Because what matters is that they are in and when they do, it's party time. Hey! Come on, turn to two people around you. Turn to two people around you and I five them and say, it's my party time. It's my party time. I five them and say, it's my party time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's my party time. It's my party time. It's my party time. That the father, that, that the father has shown, the father has shown me how much he loves me so. Oh, how he loves me. His love is like a hurricane. And I'm like the tree. I'm like the tree bending. Oh, you know when a hurricane is blowing and the tree is bending. I'm like the tree bending under the weight of his mercy. Somebody help me praise the Lord. That he is jealous, he's jealous for me. He's jealous for me. If you want to be a party pooper, go ahead. But you ain't stopping my party. You ain't stopping my party now. Cause, cause I've been delivered. I've been set free. <laughs> oh, I, I, I've been forgiven. <laughs> And right now is the moment. Right now is the day. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go back. Can go back to the way he used to be. Hey! Mm. Hey. I, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I, I feel this presence of God in this place like never before. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But on this Father's Day, 
You don't have to live with that prodigal brother syndrome anymore. You don't have to live with PBS anymore. Because the Lord says to tell you, that's why he has given you the garment of praise for your spirit of heaviness. That's why he's given you a hall of gladness for your spirit of mourning. Hello, somebody. Give the Lord a praise. Hey! Praise him. Praise him. And church, it, it suddenly dawned on me suddenly dawned on me as I began to dig deeper into this text that the father in the story didn't throw the party because somehow he liked the younger brother more than the older brother. God doesn't play favoritism. And the father in this story, Dickie Neal, is a picture of our father who is in heaven. He threw the party because what he wanted most of all was for both his sons to be home. But the prodigal brother, smacking, was blinded by his syndrome. Who does that remind you of? Does that remind you of somebody we've been studying lately? Does that remind you of, 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 of a man named Jonah? Who was mad when the Ninevites repented? In fact, when, 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 I, was, when I was in Jonah chapter 4, a few weeks ago, I was already thinking of this message. I go, wow, this is a good segue. I'm still in the, in, in the vicinity. I'm still in the groove. I'm still in the track of what we've been talking about. I go, wow, this prodigal son, Jonah is like the prodigal son. Think with me for a minute. The younger son, the younger son is like Jonah when Jonah was running. And the older brother is like Jonah when he was pouting like a cat. Meow. Where's our cat lady? Our cat lady's here. Go, 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 go. Do it for me, do it for me. Was it you? Who was it last two weeks ago? Joe? Oh, do it, do, 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 do it, do it. Our cat lady's here. Meow. This prodigal body is a cat. Is my meow. Do it again. Oh, meow. <laughs> But gentlemen, gentlemen, here is the crux. Here is the cross of this, of this parable why Jesus told it. He told it so you and I wouldn't fall. Listen to this very carefully because I said it's the crux. Here's the, here's the reason, here's the crux of, of why Jesus told this parable. He told this parable so you and I wouldn't fall into two traps. that this prodigal brother fell into. Because you see, we can have it good going for us. Every man in this place, I'm telling you, 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 what you have, you have it good going for you already. We can have it good going for us. We can have it good at home. But if we are not careful, we can fall into these two traps like this prodigal brother. So let me share these two traps with you. On this Father's Day that we want to avoid, I'll share them with you one by one. Are you ready to receive? Number one, trap of distorted values. Trap of distorted values. By that I mean, by that I mean doing what you're doing for your wife and children out of duty and not out of devotion. Ah, this is good. Men, it's a distorted, va it's a distorted value to think we're serving our family because we think it's our duty to provide for them rather than to love them. 
It's a distortion. It's a distortion right from the pits of hell, you all. Look at this prodigal brother syndrome. He says to his father in verse 29, he says to his father in verse 29, look, for so many years I've been serving you and I've never neglected a command of yours and, and, and yet you've never given me a young goat. Really? So you're doing what you're doing for the father out of mechanical obedience. Not because you love the father. I mean, this prodigal brother was so far, he was so far from the father that he didn't even know what was going on in his father's house. In verse 26, in verse 26, he had to inquire from the servant what is going on. Even in his own father's house. He was busy doing the father's work while he was meeting out, missing out on the father's heart. My brothers and my sisters, that happens in marriages too. Gentlemen, since this is our day, my wife spoke to the ladies on Mother's Day, since this is our day, gentlemen, we, I'm including myself, we can be busy being the provider and the breadwinner of the house when what our wives want from us is to be lovers and protect us in the house too. Not just be providers and breadwinners. Oh, this message is going to get good this morning. Tell your neighbor a juicy one is coming. A juicy one is coming. Mm -hmm. you, it will make you feel good. A man, a man can be disengaged in a relationship. Ladies, ladies, this is where we want you to pray for us. Ah! This is where we want you to pray for us. Women of Zion. This is where, hear me and hear me good. Your mother and horse in this house. One can put a thousand to flight, and two ten thousand. We have more women in this house than we have. Hear me, this is where we need you to pray for us. See, see, a man can be disengaged in a relationship and still come home to you at night out of duty. He can come home and still ask you, what's for dinner tonight? Even get into bed with you. Pay the bills. Send you flowers for your anniversary. And do all the dutiful things. But emotionally, is already checked out of the marriage. Oh, 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 you think, you think getting flowers from him on Valentine's Day is a sign that he... Oh, 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 oh I'm a man. I'm talking to you, ladies. I'm talking to you as a man. Think it. So, oh. oh you, you don't want me to be real this morning. But there is a reason Jesus is showing us a syndrome we got to avoid here this morning, man. There's a reason why he's showing us this, this syndrome. Because, because doing what is expected of you is something you can train a monkey to do. Give me the picture. You can train an elephant. You can train an elephant to sit on a stool with two legs up. <laughs> but that doesn't mean the elephant loves you. It doesn't mean the elephant loves you a bit. 
talk to me somebody and any time a man emotionally I'm not talking physically because you can be there you can be in, you can be in the house and not be in the house hey oh that is profound mm, 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 mm. I, I said the prodigal son the prodigal brother was in the house but he wasn't in the house a man can be in the house but not really in the house oh he didn't leave he's there oh, can I take you deeper when the Bible says in Hebrews I will never leave thee now what I will never leave thee nor forsake thee ah when you leave you leave a person physically when you forsake you abandon a person emotionally so I can be with you but not be with you that's forsaking I haven't left so 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 God is saying there I won't leave you physically but emotionally I won't even abandon you just call my name anytime a man emotionally not physically anytime a man emotionally abandoned his family that's when the thief comes to steal kill and destroy because Jesus says in, in the passage that, that Dick and Neil was praying about maybe here or, up, or, or downstairs there he was praying that, that a house divided against itself cannot what? cannot stand but the devil is a liar I say the devil is a liar and Jesus is still the Messiah because someone here is getting your marriage revived this morning I said somebody here is getting your relationship with your children restored today in Jesus name shout amen because the moment the moment you know the enemy's tactics <laughs> the moment you know the enemy's syndrome the moment you understand the insidiousness of the enemy who comes to steal kill and destroy the moment you understand what pit not to fall into then you've got the victory Amen. hello somebody Amen. give me the lifeline give me the lifeline and the key to your victory man is being able to honestly ask yourself do i value my relationships more than i value my work The prodigal brother, like the Pharisees, valued their work more than they value their relationship with God. That's the crux of what Jesus is teaching us here. Because it's easy to be busy doing. It's, for, I'm a doer. It's easy to be busy doing and not being. And there's a reason why God calls us human beings and not human doings. Get it? Can you imagine me saying to my wife on our anniversary? Can you imagine me saying to Miriam on an anniversary? Here, Miriam. Here, Miriam. It's that time of the year again. It's my duty to get you flowers. Here's a dozen roses. There you go. I fulfilled my anniversary obligations. Enjoy it. <laughs> How many of you think I might get the roses back in my face? 
all of you? Yes. Why, why do I have a feeling that you're all on my wife's side and on my side? I'm with you too. I'm totally with you too. Unless Marion has a distorted value, herself, and a warped affection. Because some women can have a warped affection too. Or unless she has a warped affections, she would know that while being a father and a faithful husband involves duty. Men, I'm not saying we don't have a duty. We have a duty to perform like our father who is in heaven. While being a faithful husband involves duty as a provider. A wife also wants to know that being a husband is my greatest joy as a lover. Am I right, church? In the same way, Jesus is saying what the father wants is for the prodigal brother to serve him out of devotion and not out of duty. To serve him out of love and not out of lust. Who is this message helping already this morning? Let, let me hurry up and give you the second trap we need to avoid. Are you all good? Are you all good? Okay. Well, just, just, just check some of your neighbors are like, check them if they still have pulse. Say, are you still breathing? <laughs> all right, good, good. You're all good. Number two, number two, number two. I know I'm not boring. Number two. Number two. Number two. Trap that you got to avoid, men. Trap of distorted virtues. It fell from values to virtues. That's how it comes. It always goes like that. Can you see how the prodigal elder brother was just so full of himself? Full of himself. Do you know a friend or a brother or a sister who are just full of themselves? If you're sitting beside a prodigal brother or a prodigal sister, just look at them and help someone say, get over yourself. Get. See, see, that's the prodigal syndrome right there. Get over yourself. Look how he's talking to his own father. Verse 29. Look, verse 29, give it to me. He says to his father, Look. 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 Can you hear the resentment in his voice? Look. He's smirking. Look. For so many years, I've been serving you and I've never disobeyed you. But you're being rude. And yet you've never given me a little billy goat that I might be, that I might marry, I might celebrate my friends. I didn't even know that this brother has friends. This guy who is all work and no play makes Jack a dog boy has friends? Imaginary friend. I, I think it's imaginary friends. I'm not even sure that anyone wants to be around this self-righteous, egotistical, prodigal brother. Who wants to be around a prune? Raise up your hands. Let me ask you, how many of you here enjoy hanging around people who hate you? If you raise up your hands, something is wrong with you. And you, you, my friend, might need to visit a love doctor. <laughs> Nobody enjoys being around an old yeller. Sorry, I don't even like being around me when I'm having a, self, a pity party. Talk less of being around people that are hard to get along. Because 
life is too short to waste it on bickering, backbiting, forcing and cursing when there's a bigger fish for us to fry. Honey, come on somebody. See, see, any good bona fide relationship is about give and take. I don't see that here with the prodigal brother because he has a syndrome. Look how many times he used the word I in verse 29 alone. I have been, I never, that I might, I, I, get over yourself, buddy! You know what? Hmm, this is good. I'm going to take you deeper. I'm almost done. I have a sneaky suspicion. Listen to this very carefully. I saw this. I read this between the lines. It's right here. I'm not, I'm not trying to be, be, uh, be uh, what do you call it, uh, heretic here. I have a sneaky suspicion that the younger brother left the father's house because of this older brother's pious, egotistical attitude. Can you imagine how difficult it must have been for him to come back home? When you see the prodigal come back home, just welcome them. Don't ask them any question. The father didn't even ask him any question. He said, shh. The boy already rehearsed what he's going to talk, what he's going to say. Father, I've sinned against you. I've sinned. Father said, shh. Don't ask them a word because it must not have been easy for this prodigal son to come back home. But he came back anyways. Can you imagine how difficult it must have been for him? Interestingly, interestingly, the Bible says when he, the prodigal son, came to his senses, he didn't remember his older brother. The text says he remembered his father's heart. Because he remembered that in his father's presence, his fullness of joy, <laughs> and in his father's right hands, uh, are pleasures uh, forever. Oh, Lord Jesus. He remembered, as the psalmist says in Psalm 84 verse 10, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand outside. And he would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of his God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Oh, you're not talking back to me this morning. That's why I hate to think that this younger brother left home because of his older brother's attitude in the first place. Because some people are just too hard to live with. So the prodigal son came back home. But the prodigal brother with all his sanctimonious virtues still stayed outside. See him smacking at his father, verse 30. Verse 30. But when the son of yours, the son of yours, he can't even call his brother by his name. He says, the son of yours. Uh, gentlemen, you know when, when, when the resentment is building up and, and, and we're, we're upset about one of our children, and we say to our wives, <laughs> this son of yours is driving me, this daughter of yours is driving me nuts. Like he's not your son too? Like she's not your daughter too? Like, like she gave birth to them by osmosis. But this son 
of yours came who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes you kill the father calf for him the implication being you won't kill even a little billy goat for me <laughs> wait a minute Dick, you know where I'm going you see this prodigal brother syndrome showing who told him he couldn't have killed a cow for himself oh I love the father's response I love this father I love his response to his whining son verse 31 I'm almost done my child you've always been with me and all that is mine can you imagine Bill Gates telling his son all that is mine is yours yes sir <laughs> all that is mine is yours good God meaning all along this prodigal brother is a prince but he was living like a pauper all along this bro prodigal brother was a son but he was living like a slave all along this prodigal brother was a lender but he was living like a borrower Amen. hey somebody missed that it reminds me of a guy who was on a cruise ship to the Caribbean and he's always, he's always wanted to go on a cruise ship bad so, so he managed to scrunch all his little pennies and nickels and dimes together so I, he managed to put all his money together so he could go on this cruise ship so, so, so he packed himself some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because he knew he wouldn't be able to afford sumptuous meal on the cruise it was a weak cruise so this guy planned on eating peanut butter and jelly sandwich morning, afternoon, evening. <laughs> All week long. He got on the boat and he was excited just to be on the boat. Even though he had to eat only peanut butter, jelly and sandwich. At first the guy was doing fine until he began to see all the other travelers dining with sumptuous meal in the dining room and folks were gorging themselves on beef steak and chicken breast and red snapper and pina colada and tequila I'm gonna say tequila tequila uh, you know when you you take your wife to those nice uh, all-inclusive place and you come back and you tell us it's like you eat like there's no tomorrow <laughs> so this guy was looking at all the diners and he thought to himself, Lord have mercy. Here am I eating peanut butter, jelly, and sandwich. Morning, afternoon, evening. And these people are eating all this. And one day he saw one of the guys coming out with a big fancy plate of food in his hands. And he asked how much the plate cost. And he began to explain to the guy with a big plate that he only had money for his crew ticket. And he didn't bring enough money for the meal. He's been eating only peanut butter, jelly, and sandwich. <laughs> With disbelief. Disbelief. The guy with the big plate looked at him and said, Sir, when you purchase your ticket, all the food we have been eating were included in the price of your ticket. Boy, did our peanut butter, jelly, and sandwich brother felt like an idiot. Here's a brother who's weak. His week is almost coming to an end. And he's just discovering that he could have been eating them sumptuous meal. But all week he's been eating his peanut butter and jelly sandwich. When he could have been feasting like a king. Amen. And there may be some brothers here this morning as I close. You've been stuck with your peanut butter and jelly sandwich for the, all these years. When your father already prepared a table before you. Amen. In the presence of your enemies. 
and he has anointed your head with oil and your cup has begun to overflow but you're wondering you're still wondering like the prodigal brother why you can't have the fatted cow well the Lord sent me here to tell you this morning on this Father's Day give me the lifeline that all that is is oh come on give me all that is 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 yours the moment you gave your life to Jesus and you got your ticket to heaven salvation is yours deliverance is yours forgiveness is yours healing is yours provision is yours protection is yours prosperity is in the deal oh I said salvation is in the package come on somebody lift up your hands lift up your hands and holler it's all mine the father says to tell you all that is mine is yours all the favor is mine all the strength is in the ticket somebody you got to make up your mind on this father's day that you're going to leave the peanut butter and jelly sandwich outside and you're going to even leave them billy goat outside and you're going to come into the father's house and enjoy the fatted calf and quit being difficult to live with and get rid of that prodigal brother syndrome in Jesus name because he whom the son has set free he whom the son has set free and everybody said stand up on your feet welcome back I trust you were blessed by that message this morning again happy Father's Day to you all our fathers out there oh what a wonderful day and what a glorious blessing to know that we have a father in heaven who is fathering us I don't know about you but he said he's going to be the father to the fatherless and every moment of my life I still need him to father me even though I'm a grown-up man oh don't you need the father to father you he promised that he will be the father to the fatherless and this morning we talked about the prodigal brother syndrome that 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 syndrome that our father in heaven wants us to avoid as men in the house the first trap that we need to avoid as you heard this morning is the trap of distorted value and then we talked about the trap of the distorted virtues from values to virtues and all these things are traps that we men face and Jesus don't want us to fall into that trap like the prodigal brother fell into but this morning we've been set free we've been delivered and the Bible said he whom the son has set free is free indeed and so I pray freedom over you men this morning I pray peace over you as a father that wherever you've been made weak God will make you strong because he is the lifter of our heads let me pray with you father right now and as I pray for my men in this church this morning as we pray together I want to pray for you that the glory of God will continue to shine around about you and fill you and renew you and revitalize you so that you can be that man that God wants you to be in your house in your workplace and in your church above all in your world father I pray for that man who is watching this morning or this afternoon or this evening whenever they're watching this message father that you will bring all prodigal son back home and father that you will break that prodigal brother spirit in us and you will set us free father we love you we thank you that everything that you have is ours and Lord God what can we do without you and so this morning we're asking you God that where we've been made weak you make us strong where we've been broken Lord you'll fill all the broken places and you'll bring healing back into our soul 
Father, we want to embrace you, Lord. We want to embrace you. Just, just, just throw ourselves into your loving hands as our Father. As you carry us on, on this journey. We love you. We're grateful for you. And we thank you for all that you have been to us. Would you continue to father us until the day is done? In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day to you all men out there. And let us keep on keeping on. And we look forward to seeing you again next week, same time, same station, WHBC TV. Why don't you invite a friend to watch with you? Be blessed.